Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of the Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. And if you'd like to learn more about our paper, just visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and there you can find all the necessary information. You can receive the paper, it's always free of charge, as a PDF in your email, or you can receive a hard copy through the United States Postal Service. Just let us know what we can do for you, and we'll be happy to add you to one of our mailing lists. So I'm back at it again. I've been out for a couple of weeks dealing with the virus. We're doing well, recovered, and now getting back to work. And so happy to be here and record another episode. Today I want to share an article with you from the July 1999 edition of Fulton County Gospel News. There's no author included on this article, but the title is The Oldest Church in the World, And it's a fairly brief article, so I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to have some comments to add after that. Upon this rock I will build my church, Matthew 16, 18. Jesus promised to build a church. It was to be his church. In Mark 9, 1, Christ said this kingdom, or church, would come with power. After his resurrection, Jesus told his apostles to wait in Jerusalem for power, Acts 1, 4 through 8. The power came on the first Pentecost day following the resurrection of Christ, and the church was established on that day, according to the second chapter of Acts. Jesus is both the founder and foundation of the church one reads about in the New Testament. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.11. Any church established by any person other than Christ, in any place other than Jerusalem, at any time other than the first Pentecost after the Lord's resurrection, is not the New Testament church. The Church of Christ is over 1,900 years old. The church Jesus built exists in the world today. It exists anywhere people abandon human opinions about religion and submit entirely and completely to the teaching of the New Testament. You can identify Christ's church in the world today. Read what the Bible says on the name we are to wear, the worship we are to offer God, the work of Christians, the organization and government of the church, and compare scriptural teaching to what men are doing in the religious world. Where you find people who are just Christians, worshiping and working in exact conformity to the Word of God, without human creeds or catechisms, without additions, subtractions, or substitutions to the things taught in the Scripture, you will have found the Lord's church. It is in the world today. So like I said, that's a fairly short article, and the author, again, whoever it was is not listed, mentions a few passages of Scripture, Uh, Matthew 16, 18, Mark 9, 1, Acts 1, 4 through 8, and then 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. But I want to add a Scripture to this thought of the oldest church in the world, and it comes from Luke chapter 24. So I'm going to read to you Luke 24, beginning in verse 46. Now this is what we would call Luke's account of the Great Commission of Christ. And pay attention to what he says here. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, And thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now, the author in the article does mention that the kingdom would come with power. He mentions the resurrection of Christ. He mentions the fact that they were to wait in Jerusalem. And he does that in the context of what's recorded in Acts chapter 1. Now, we also understand that Luke wrote the book of Acts. And so where the gospel account of Luke drops off, the book of Acts picks up perfectly. It's a pretty smooth transition from one to the other. But a couple things to notice here in Luke chapter 24 again, beginning in verse 46, is that Jesus talks about, uh, Luke 24, 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Now, I don't know if you've ever taken the time or if you've ever noticed the fact of what he says there and how perfectly parallel it is with Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Now, of course, we know in Acts 2, the apostles are in Jerusalem. They've been endued with that power from on high. They had started speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, according to Acts chapter 2 and verses 1 through 4. And then, of course, we're familiar with Acts 2 and verse 38, when the crowd who heard Peter preaching said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter's message was, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. 
Now what Luke 24, 47 again says is that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Well, Acts 2 records that. That's where the beginning of preaching repentance and remission of sins began, and we know that it was accompanied by Peter's command for them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And of course, as you read the account there in Luke, or rather Acts chapter 2, we see for the first time in history that people were being added to the church daily as they were being saved, as it's recorded in Acts 2 and verse 47. So this prophecy here that Jesus gives in Luke 24 is fulfilled completely there in Acts chapter 2. The kingdom came with power. Repentance and remission of sins was beginning to be preached there in Jerusalem by the apostles. And that's exactly what Jesus uh, commissioned them to do and told them what would happen. And you remember what Jesus told them in John chapters 14, 15, and 16, that he was getting ready to leave, and then when he left, he would send the Holy Spirit who would guide them into all truth. And we see that beginning in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit came upon them and again gave them the ability to speak in other tongues. So we can know for certain when the church began. Now it's important in this article, you remember the author mentioned Mark 9 and verse 1. Jesus told an audience, he said that some of you will be standing here, to, some of you who are standing here today will not taste of death until you've seen the kingdom of God having come with power. Well, we know that that power came from the Holy Spirit. And again, that was in direct connection with Jesus telling his apostles to be in Jerusalem, to wait for that power, and the preaching of repentance and remission of sins would begin when all of that took place. And Acts 2 records that for us. So when we talk about the oldest church in the world, this is what we're talking about. Jesus promised to build it. There's no other foundation. It was connected with repentance and remission of sins. It was started in the city of Jerusalem based upon apostolic preaching and the response to that preaching. You know, you remember Acts 2 in in verse 41 says, Those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And I like how he ended the article talking about we can conform to God's word without human creeds or catechisms, without additions, subtractions, or substitutions. We can and we must go by the Bible alone if we want to be a member of the church for which Christ died and that we read about in Acts chapter 2. Well, hey, I appreciate you listening to this episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. And again, I know it's been a few weeks, but I've just been unable to record. I've been sick, so we're over that and back at work now. So thanks again for listening today. Again, if you'd like to get the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com. Look for our contact information, get a hold of us, and we'll be happy to add you to our mail list. If you've not yet subscribed to our Podbean channel, go to podbean.com and you can subscribe. You can go through Apple, you can go through Google Play Store, and you can find the Podbean app. You can listen on your phone, but uh, subscribe and follow and you'll get notifications when a new episode comes out. And you can also interact with each individual episode. So thanks again for listening today, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast.